I don't know if I have the energy to keep doing this, guys. Not until we see some changes to this team. I appreciate you all still listening in despite the current state of this franchise and even watching the day before Thanksgiving or even on Thanksgiving by the time you're watching this. But man, it's been brutal trying to cover this team. It was impressive to an extent that they hung around in this one against the Thunder. I mean, it was another game in which they had a terrible start. I still cannot understand how Billy Donovan, as a head coach, isn't getting at these guys for the inexcusable starts to games. But somehow, how the Bulls found their way back into this one by playing solid in the third quarter, much better offense with the ball flying around, running up and down the floor. DeMar started taking over and was finally getting to his spots and actually playing like a savvy veteran player in late game situations that we're so used to seeing. And the reason I found all this more impressive for the Bulls coming back in this one is unlike a team like the Magic of the Heat when they had poor starts and found their way back into the game. This is the Oklahoma City Thunder, who I consider to be one of the best teams in the NBA with all their young talent and a balanced roster, and it was on the road. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you come back, who you come back against, they still took an L, putting the Bulls 5-11 and now, back behind the Hornets for 13th in the Eastern Conference. Absolutely brutal. Before I get into the rest of the video, I wanted to quickly tell you about today's sponsor, So Rare, which I am super excited to tell you guys about their platform, especially considering it is free to join, it is super fun, and you get to win prizes, collect digital cards and assets in the form of NFTs. Unlike most fantasy sports apps, they are different in that it's actually a fantasy gaming marketplace. There is no gambling or betting of any kind. The site enables you to play where users own their players forever. Think of it like you're a GM creating your own dynasty, and you're competing weekly in fantasy competitions for great prizes. Users are owners or general managers of their team making trades, buying and selling players, all that good stuff. And unlike other gaming sites or betting platforms, it doesn't cost you anything to play. You can start for free. I've created my own private league where you can compete and play against each other for prizes and offers, so check it out if you're interested. Join my private league. Link is in the description. We got some great people in there. And thanks again to So Rare for sponsoring this video. You know, I know Stacey King keeps saying on the broadcast this team is so close, how they're so close to turning things around. I love Stacey and I've had him on the channel in the past and always value his insight and opinion, but I don't know how one can say with a straight face that this team is so close to turning it around. It's been clear for over a year now that this team isn't going anywhere. Yeah, yeah, they show some signs of life here and there. Yeah, maybe they come back in games and nearly get an impressive win, but for the most part, they're losing. Their offense is crap, and the guys all but look checked out at this point. Even Billy Donovan looks checked out. This team isn't going to figure it out, plain and simple. And until the front office recognizes that and starts making meaningful changes, it's going to be more of the same thing that you see before us. Now, part of me would like to say that had Zach Levine played tonight, maybe the Bulls would have been able to pull out a win, but as much as we may want to believe that, and the Bulls definitely could have used his offense, you're probably going to get the same result that we've been seeing with the slow starts happening with Zach also in the lineup. You know what's crazy is everyone always harps on the Bulls for losing the three-point battle. They don't take enough threes, they don't make enough. The Bulls put up 44 threes tonight, very uncharacteristic of them, and they hit 17 of them, good for 38%, while the Thunder only put up 29 threes and made 11, 18 point differential in terms of three-point shooting. It gets even crazier because the Bulls also had 13 more shot attempts than the Thunder did in this game. The Thunder only took 75 shots, which is below average, below league average, and yet somehow they still managed to win the game. You know why? Free throws. The Bulls had 17 free throws. They made every single one of them, by the way, 17 free throws to the Thunder's 38. Now, you can maybe blame some of that on the questionable calls. Jay Gilgis Alexander definitely gets a lot of ticky tack fouls call when he drives to the basket, but for the most part, I wouldn't say this game was poorly officiated or that it was grossly unfair. Some bad calls here and there, but that's going to happen in the game of basketball. But the Bulls, they just committed a lot of bad fouls. Some of them really bad ones, fouling the three-point shooter, Kobe fouling on the three-pointer and the M1 in a chance at a four-point play, which all but sealed the game for them. Just a lot of basic mistakes, mental lapses, and miscues that really impacted this team and their ability to win the game. Like, it's very rare for the Bulls to outscore their opponent from the three-point line or have such a huge disparity in the overall number of shots. They forced the Thunder to shoot less than 40%. The defense was solid, but it's the little things the attention to detail that kills the Bulls and has been killing them all season. And it's another piece that impacts their offense, their low free throw attempt rate. 
And it's part of the reason they have such a low offensive rating and ability to generate offense as a whole. They're not good at getting inside and drawing contact. Damar is really the only guy that can do that with ease, and to an extent, Zach, Bulls are 25th in the league in free throw attempts. It's unfortunate because the Bulls actually played a decent game against a great team. They had balanced scoring with all the starters and double figures. Patrick Williams even got into double figures, which seems like a miraculous accomplishment at this point. Kobe White had another great game, shooting it well from behind the arc. Seven threes in this one for him, seven for 12 from deep. That's what we need to see from Kobe White. Like the Bulls need a legitimate three point threat on a consistent basis that defenses know they have to respect when they go up against the Bulls. Zach is really the only one. And obviously, he might not be around for very much longer. 25 points, 5 assists. I just need Kobe to stop fouling so much. I know sometimes it isn't his fault, and I applaud him for trying to play strong defense, but because of how small he is, he more often than not gets bodied when his man is driving to the basket, and you saw that a lot tonight. But regardless, it is encouraging to finally see Kobe coming out of that shooting slump and being a more dominant scorer in the starting lineup. Vucevic was also solid tonight, played really well in the post, even hit a couple threes, 16 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, only 1 turnover. Caruso still keeping up his side on offense, 12 points, 5 for 12, hit a couple threes. And then DeMar, who started out the game really slow, I feel like he didn't even have his first field goal until the second half. If I remember correctly, he started out 0 for 7, which was not good when you need him to step up and be the focal point on offense with no Zach Levine. But he started taking over in the second half, really willed this team back into the game. It was almost like you knew DeMar felt the only way this team was going to have a small chance at winning was by him just taking over the game. Shot 6 for 17, not good but where he got the bulk of his points was at the line. 13 for 13, finished with 25 points and six assists, two steals, no block. And he also passed 22,000 points for his career, good for 36th on the all-time scoring list. Congrats to Damar on that. Now, as far as Zach Levine and this right foot soreness, they're not sure whether he'll be good to go on Friday against the Raptors. If you ask me, which I have no sources or anything to back this up, but it sounds a little suspect. Zach has only taken 19 shots in his last two games. Obviously, we already know he wants to go elsewhere. And and then all of a sudden he has some soreness in his foot. I don't know, just sounds a bit too much of a coincidence to me. He more than likely doesn't want to play or the Bulls are maybe working with him on sitting him out for a while until they find that trade that they're looking for. I could be completely wrong and maybe the injury is legitimate, just seemed a little suspect for me given the timing of everything and the state of the team. Bulls have got the Raptors on Friday. Their schedule is not going to be easy these next few games, and this could very well be their only winnable game for a while for a Raptors team that is also struggling to find some consistency and an identity like the Bulls. Otherwise, yeah, the Bulls are in for a long road ahead of them with more and more separation being created between them and the rest of the Eastern Conference. Happy Thanksgiving to you all, by the way. Hope you're able to celebrate with all your friends and family. I am, of course, incredibly thankful to all of you and your continued support on the channel. If you're not already, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.